Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to the 2019 Ford Focus. This restyled model is mine for the next few days, thanks to the guys at Hendy Ford in Portsmouth. And I wanted to do a bit of a living with review, but before we take it on a road trip, let's take a look round the outside of the car, have a look inside at the remodeled interior, have a chat about the spec, and then we'll find out if it's any good or not. So let's take a look around the outside of the car and we will start with the front and to be honest I'm not hugely convinced. The old car had a really nice front end and I'm just not sure about this one. I think it's one of those ones that will take time and will eventually grow on me. But it's kind of got a sort of, you know, pretty sharky nose. I'm not so sure about the chrome on this titanium model either. So the front is gonna take some time to grow on me. However, I really like the back of the car. So there's a lot of similar styling cues to the new Fiesta I can see in this, the way that the lights kind of come into the boot lid itself. I always really liked the very first Ford Focus where the lights were kind of up here and there was, there was no lights, it just broke tradition so much, it was so different from everything else. Um, but I do like the, the rear end of the car. I think this particular car for me suffers probably because I'm a really big wheels fan and this particular model the wheels just aren't quite big enough for me they don't quite fill the arches the tires are a little bit too high profile for me and I think when we start to see the ST and the RS models I think the styling of this car will come to life but I, I do like the rear of the car I think it certainly looks it looks like it means business and it's quite stylish but the exterior aesthetics I know are going to divide opinion I know people are going to not like it or you know there'll be people who like it too but um yeah on the whole not bad around the outside difficult to improve something that looks so good in the first place the previous mark focus for me just looked really really cool especially in rs trim but where this car does really start to look good is on the inside so let's jump inside and take a look at the cabin and the spec Well, here we go on the inside. Now, if you've seen my recent Fiesta ST video, one of the things that blew me away about that car was the quality of the interior. A real step change for me for Ford. And it's followed through in this. Now, the ST clearly is kind of one of the higher end models in terms of trim spec. This is a titanium, so it's a very, very well equipped car. It's got a nice kind of brushed aluminium effect. And overall, the choice of materials in here is very nice. It's a really nice Ford interior. Um, spec wise, we've got lots and lots of stuff on here. I have a spec sheet, so I will reel off the various options and how much this cost um, for, for all of the spec that we've got. So the standard features of this car, it comes standard with 16 inch alloys. As I said, I would, I would probably get those a little bit bigger. LED rear lights, front grille uh, with chrome, not a big fan of that if I'm honest, power fold door mirrors, puddle lights on the doors and front and rear parking sensors. All of that is standard. Optional features on this particular car and um, we've got magnetic uh, which is 525 pounds, I'm guessing that's to do with the suspension. It's got the Bang & Olufsen play system, so I'm going to put that to the test on our little road trip, that's 350 pounds. Uh, paint and interior protection 379 pounds um, and all of that is not a huge amount of options actually so this car listed is 22,829 pounds which I don't think is too bad it's got the one litre EcoBoost engine 125 PS and it's got a six speed manual transmission with front wheel drive. Um, I'm also going to test these fuel figures as well. Combined cycle is quoted as 58.9 mpg so we're going to put that to the test and it's got a five star NCAP crash rating as well. 
So finally, let's just have a bit of a chat about the infotainment system. This is the Ford Sync 3 system. We just switched the car on. Um, so I've got sat nav, I've got the BNO Play system. Um, as we get going, I'm going to link my phone and have a look at some of the other things to just see what that's like to live with. It's a touch screen um, from my minimal amount of time in the car so far. Actually, the touch screen seems to be okay. Turn that off. Um, but we've got a, 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 a range of different things on there that I will be playing with as we get cracking. Um, now, last thing before we start off on a little road trip, let's have a chat about rear space and boot space uh, and then we can get going. Oh, now, you know me, I always like to jump in the back of a car to see what the leg space is like. I'm actually pleasantly surprised in this. Well, not really, because it's a focus. It's going to be more roomy than the Fiesta I drove recently, that's for sure. Plenty of space in here. This car has a cloth interior, and these seats are pretty comfortable, actually. I'm not a big fan of cloth interiors. I always like to be lucky enough, hopefully, to step up and go leather. But it's a nice, comfy place. So plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom. I could sit in here for a long journey, no worries whatsoever. So off we head. Now, I have plenty of boot space. I've got all my race gear. I'm only staying one night away, so I don't have a huge amount of kit, but I want my helmet, my race suit, and all those types of things, loads of room in the boot. And we've got 225 miles to go to the destination. As I said, we're doing a track day tomorrow at Alton Park, and I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to stretch this car's legs. I don't often get cars where I can have them long enough to do a nice long journey. A um, couple of things are set up. This car with the Sync 3 system has Apple CarPlay. You basically just have to connect your iPhone via a cable to the USB port, um, and then it's very easy to set up, so you have Apple CarPlay. Something that is a little bit frustrating already though, and if you understand how to overcome this problem, please put in the comments below, but I can't seem to get sat-nav from the car and Apple CarPlay at the same time. Um, once you go into Apple CarPlay, if you go to uh, Sync 3 and then Maps, it ends up going onto the Maps from your iPhone, not the sat-nav in the car. Uh, and I quite want, I really want to use the sat-nav in the car, so that's a bit frustrating, but apart from that, Everything else is really easy to set up as normal. These phone, setting your phone up and pairing your phone is really easy. So um, nice, comfy driving position, um, reach and tilt adjustment in the steering column, um, and nice, comfy seat. So uh, basically, head down. Now, I am going to try and do on the way up. I'm going to try and drive as reasonably economically as possible. This car has three modes: it has normal, eco, and sport. So. I'm going to drive on the way up there in eco mode. See what the sat nav, uh, see what the um, average fuel consumption is, and then when I drive back tomorrow evening, I know I'm going to want to get home, and I'll be driving a little bit quicker, and I'll drive home in sport mode. So let's do a comparison to see whether or not we can get anywhere near Ford's quoted combined MPG figure. Should be interesting. So we are 30 miles in and I've just had a basically a whole bunch of B roads. The first section of my drive today is cross country on B roads. I'm in eco mode and my first impressions of this car in eco mode are it's not got a lot of go and I am having to kind of recalibrate my approach to this car a little bit. This isn't the kind of car I personally would buy because it just doesn't have enough grunt for me. But the kind of person who would buy this car who is wanting to think about economy and, and uh, you know, cheaper motoring. Um, I, I, all I'm hoping is that the fuel economy gives me the result I want because the driving performance isn't there for me. Having said that, it's not slow, it's just that if you are stuck behind something on a B road or an A road, you're gonna stay there because it doesn't really have the overtaking performance. The other thing to notice as well is it's got um, uh, lane assistance. So if you drift out of your lane, the steering wheel just pulls you back in again. And I've never been a big fan of those systems, if I'm honest. When you drift out the lane, or if you just start moving towards the lane and it starts tugging the steering wheel, for me, it feels like you've got a flat tire. It feels like there's something wrong with the car. It's quite a weird sensation. If you're actually indicating as you cross over the line, like I've just done there, you don't get it. I would probably either not opt that or spec that option um, at all, or 
I'd just switch it off because it just would annoy me and, and I think it's quite a lazy feature. But it has got some other quite good safety features um, you know, on the car, but that particular one, not for me. So far, I'm finding the SYNC 3 system really easy to use. The touch screen is very sensitive. <clears throat> I've had a couple of incoming calls, managed to take those without any distractions. The sat-nav seems to be pretty good so far. It's not taking me any wrong directions, although we've still got quite a long way to go, so we'll see that. Um, and then just from a, you know, sitting here in the driver's seat, I've got all the things I want. I've got dual zone climate control, heated seat, not that I need that today. And all in all, a really nicely put together package, you know, for, for the money, a really comfortable place. So yeah, so far, tech point of view wise, I'm, I am really impressed. I like this car a lot. It's certainly a very comfortable place to do a long journey. So whilst this eco mode might be a little frustrating for the more spirited driver on the back roads, when you get out on the motorway, it's absolutely fine. You stick the cruise control on and it just cruises away. There isn't a huge amount of road noise, there's a little bit, but it's got quite high profile tyres this, which, which kind of deadens that a little bit. So on a nice cruise, really that's where this car for me comes into its own. It sits there on motorway speeds with cruise on, and, and it's a really comfy place to go and do a nice long journey. So quite impressive actually. But I don't think you would use the eco mode on the back roads very much because it just doesn't have any, any go at all. But on the motorway, it's all good. destination which is actually my eldest brother's house Stephen because he is gonna come to Alton Park with us tomorrow for the track day so I have done 212 miles and I've averaged 51.7 miles per gallon which I don't think is too bad and I haven't been driving you know completely conservatively there have been a few times when I've had to put my foot down and I've been driving along at motorway speeds. Had I sat there at you know 56 miles an hour, I'm sure I would have edged maybe a, a good few miles per gallon on top of that, but pretty impressive. So I will see you guys tomorrow at Alton Park, and then we've got to drive all the way home. I'll see you then. Welcome to Alton Park. Last night I drove the new Ford Focus up here. Well, welcome back. Now, <clears throat> things didn't go quite as planned today. I did plan to do a little bit of filming with this car at Thruxton. However, my day has been so crammed full of learning to be a racing driver. We just ran out of time and then, as you can see, it started to rain. Um, now that was great for my racing driving, by the way, but not great for filming. So I am now on my way home. Now, I've got pretty much the same journey um, on the way home, although I'm starting from Old Park rather than my brother's house. So we've currently got, i just check, uh, 230 miles left to go, but the difference now is I've put it in sport mode and I'm gonna drive this car more like I would drive, drive it myself. So um, I probably, if I owned this car, would never drive it in eco mode, but I would drive it in sport mode pretty much all the time. So it will be interesting to see just what, because this little one litre EcoBoost got rave reviews and so far it's got a lot of character. It makes a really lovely noise and it's got quite a little bit of go in sport mode, but let's put it through its paces. I've also reset the trip so we can see what the fuel economy is like when you drive the car a little bit more spiritedly. This little one litre EcoBoost in sport mode is is really sprightly. Um, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde compared. It kind of runs out of steam about 6,000 RPM. 
it's, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde compared with the eco mode. It kind of makes this car pretty sporty, actually. It's not a sports car, let's just kind of, you know, before you get too excited. But it certainly has a turn of speed that is an enjoyable drive, and I like that very much. It's very impressive. So, <laughs> I really like it. It surprised me. I was starting to get a little bit disappointed with it on my drive up yesterday, but that's just purely a case of drive mode. Command. Call Tracy. Call Tracy on mobile, on other or at work. Mobile. I found multiple phone numbers for Tracy on mobile. Please say the line number of the item you want. Two. Calling Tracy on mobile. Voice activation works really well in this car. First time it's ever worked in any car I've been in a ring. private conversation though. So we're 140 miles into our journey home and I thought I'd do a quick sit rep on the MPG and we're currently running at 41.4 MPG which is about 10 MPG less than driving sensibly in eco mode. But I don't think that's too bad actually because I am driving in a reasonably spirited way uh, because I need to get home and it's late and it's actually going dark and I'm hungry and I'm tired and I just want to get home but I think that's pretty good. Um, we're now off the motorway it's getting dark so I don't know how well you'll be able to see me but I just wanted to have a bit of a chat very briefly about the driving characteristics of this little engine. You just need to rev it and keep it in the right gear. If you if you get in too high a gear it kind of doesn't have the torque to sort itself out so you just find yourself changing down into a, a lower gear than you might do maybe normally. Just ran a roundabout back then, I kind of dropped it down into second and it pulls away quite nicely. See, and in a way I like the characteristic of that because it means you have to really drive the car, really listen to the engine and make sure you're in the right gear. But when you do, it's a very rewarding car to drive um, at, a, at a pace and get a lick on. And um, when you go around the corner, yeah, it's great. Well guys, welcome to day three of my test. I didn't do any filming towards the back end of my journey last night simply because it got dark and there wasn't enough light for the camera. Um, but my uh, fuel economy test on the way home is quite interesting. So I averaged 39.6 mpg on the way home, driving in sport mode at a robust manner. Um, and then the average fuel consumption across my whole time with the car, so if you like one journey in eco and one journey in sport, was around 43 and a half miles per gallon, which I don't think is too bad actually. So from an MPG point of view, it passes the test. My thoughts on the car, um, I am I'm yet to be convinced by the external styling. I think it's one of these cars that will grow and certainly, as I mentioned earlier in the video, when we start to see the ST and RS trims of this particular facelift come out, I think that that car will come into its own. Uh, technology wise, very impressive. I really like the SYNC 3 system. Um, the sat nav behaved itself really well. Still not sure about the whole Apple CarPlay and sat-nav not being able to run that together. If anyone knows how to fix that, then please let me know. But overall, a very comfy car to do a long journey and, and a really impressive one. And that little one lead to eco boost when you're really kind of pushing on in sport mode down a country lane is actually quite a lot of fun and it makes a really nice kind of gnarly noise as well. So there are my impressions of the brand new Ford Focus. I need to say a huge thanks to Hendy Ford in Portsmouth for letting me have the car for three days. Um, it's a really good opportunity to kind of bring to you a, a proper review, a real life review if you like. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come, and I'll see you on the next film, guys, but you take care. Drive safe.